Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It's really good to be back with you again on this Wednesday evening. And uh, just let me begin by saying thank you so very much for all of your prayers and all of the texts uh, and connections that you have made in checking on us and praying for us and our family uh, during this time. I want to give you some updates. Let me just first say that I spoke with Brother Kleindentz just a little bit ago, and uh, he is doing much better right now. He said it was an extremely rough uh, little season he went through, but uh, the second round of antibiotics has has helped him, and uh, him and Sister Kleindentz are, are doing well. Also spoke with Bobby Wade, uh, who also had COVID, and uh, he's doing he's doing good. Uh, he's going a little stir crazy, but uh, he's doing well. And uh, so we appreciate your prayers uh, for these evangelists and what they're doing. Let me just uh, give you kind of an update of what uh, has transpired with my dad. Uh, last Wednesday, which was my birthday. Uh, we had to take Dad to the hospital. He was uh, he was kind of fading. Uh, his dementia had gotten really bad, and uh, he was struggling to breathe. And uh, so, Jaron, brother Jaron Tipton, and myself uh, took him to the hospital. And uh, it was there that they said Dad had. Uh, uh, a lung that was was either collapsed or full of water and had congestive heart failure uh, and that he had COVID-19 which was needless to say a shock for all of us because I kept him pretty much at the house uh, and uh, kept him inside for the most part he sat on the porch some uh, but somehow uh, it slipped in I think on a guest but nonetheless uh, they said he had COVID and so needless to say uh, my mom and first lady and I uh, were tested last Thursday uh, for COVID and uh, as of right now we do not have any symptoms uh, we're feeling fine and doing good uh, again appreciate the prayers uh, hopefully we will be getting an all-clear report this week uh, I'm even struggling to it to understand how dad has COVID there he really doesn't have symptoms from COVID uh, he is he, uh, through the years as he's gotten older dad is 90 now uh, through the years as he's gotten older he's had some difficulty uh, with his congestive heart failure uh, he's been diagnosed with that a few times, uh, and uh, I'll, we've had to several times get him to the hospital, uh, get uh, the water, usually it comes off through Lasix, which is a, a, uh, a water pill uh, or drug, and uh, usually that's sufficient and, and get, you know, any infections out of him. He's on an antibiotic now, um, and usually he, he rebounds not sure you know how this is all going to play out right now he has a a procedure that by the time you see this video he will have had uh, to remove water from one of his lungs which should help him with his oxygen he kind of faded a little bit today uh, with his oxygen but this procedure should be helping him so your continued prayers and support along these lines would would really help us and uh, so I, I want you to know that uh, First Lady and I and Mom are, are quarantined for, for the most part right now, uh, but hope to get back out to the house of God. And, of course, our family has kind of, uh, we got stalled out here with this as well and are just uh, really tracking everything really close. want to make sure we protect the church and all the folks here. Having said that, I want you to, to understand a couple things. Uh, we are taking this very seriously. As you know, uh, until just recently, we were starting to open up 
everything was kind of opening up. We were excited about the prospects of, of getting back to some sort of normalcy. But, you know, right now, we're having to slow this process down, even to the point of uh, resetting the sanctuary back for uh, social distancing. Uh, we were working on that today and yesterday. Uh, and uh, we're uh, adjusting our policies just a little bit. Let me clarify our mask policy. Uh, we suggest that everyone wears a mask uh, when they are moving about here at the church, entering the sanctuary, leaving the sanctuary, uh, or getting up to go to the restroom. Uh, but while you're seated, or while you're at your, your seat, uh, we do not have a problem if you take your mask off. You can leave it on, uh, but we don't have a problem if you want to take it off uh, while you're sitting and uh, kind of localized and, and, and a distance from, from others. Uh, and we're asking, of course, that you sit with your families. Some of these things we have been asking you to do for a while. This is typically what the restaurants are asking of folks right now and uh, I, I understand that this will probably cause some of you uh, to not want to come uh, because of uh, needing to wear a mask and uh, I'm a little disappointed in that but I understand uh, we are certainly trying to elevate our uh, professionalism and our uh, and our, vid our, our uh, online status uh, we've added cameras. It looks much better. Sound, the sound has been tremendous lately. Video has been good. Uh, everything has has been upgraded and is is on the way up. We are wanting to get really good at that. And so, if you have to stay home, we are asking that you please stay connected to us and uh, please be faithful to to watch our videos and watch our online presence. Uh, especially on Sundays and Wednesday nights. And so we're asking you to do that. I want you uh, to understand, you know, when you're at church, to please be respectful for others uh, and their space. I know uh, Brother Josh Tipton has asked you every time he's made an announcement on this to be, if someone is wearing a mask or someone uh, is trying to distance themselves from, from everybody, please don't enter that space get in somebody's face uh, you know we've got folks that have come out wanting to be in church but wanting to be at a safe distance and we have to respect that and and uh, we are attempting to do that uh, also for now uh, in service we will not be laying hands on folks for prayer uh, we are going to back that off and have prayer over you if you're sick uh, from the pulpit, and we're going to pray powerfully and believe the Lord to touch you, uh, just like we would if we weren't with you. We believe that the Lord can touch you wherever you are, and however your whatever your condition, we believe the Lord will hear our prayers and and it will work. Obviously, we want to get as close to the scriptural uh, example as possible, but for now, I think we're going to use wisdom and uh, attempt to be as wise as possible. So we're going to do uh, uh, kind of mass prayers. Also for now, I need you to, to catch this, uh, the home groups meeting in the homes in person, we are, uh, that will be uh, stopped until further notice. I know we, we, we paused that for a couple weeks till we could get a handle on what was going on. Uh, in the country and in this area and with our church and uh, we feel very good about just not meeting in our homes for now but we're asking to please stay connected uh, allow our uh, home group leaders to connect with you whether it's by phone or by zoom uh, but whatever the case may be you're a part of this church we want you to be connected to us we want to track how you how well you're doing uh, your situations, and so we can pray for one another, care for one another, and stay connected. And you have done a great job of that thus far. We're asking all of the 
uh, home group leaders to pay, pay attention to Brother Jaron Tipton's instructions along these lines as we move forward. And so that is a more of a permanent change for now. Uh, we're thinking we got to get through July into August and see how things pan out here uh, and hope that uh, hope things settle down. We do know that the rise in the cases has a lot to do with a lot of the testing that's going on. But in light of that, I know our hospitals are, are being hit with quite a few cases. And so we need to pay attention to this. Uh, to all of our elders, seniors, those that have weakened immune systems, and those who are frail, uh, might be in tr that might be in trouble if you contract the COVID virus, uh, we're asking you to stay home and please stay connected, uh, stay safe. Really got three, three instructions here. Stay home, stay safe, and stay connected. And we love you. We're, we're trying to give phone calls to you, check on you, make sure that you are connected with us. And, uh, you know, you're an important part uh, of the church. The Lord is still with you. And uh, we all love you. And we want you, most of all, to stay safe here. And and so we want we want you to understand that we are taking this very, very seriously. We were even before uh, my dad uh, contracted this and, uh, and we're maybe even more so taking it serious now. So I appreciate that. I, I hope some of these instructions will, will help us. We can do this. We've done it once before and we can do this. And the Lord is going to help us. So I, I just I need you to understand how important this is to us for us to, to continue to function as the church of the living God. We've got a great church, great people uh, from all walks of life and all cultures. And we're, we're highly honored uh, to have this church. But we've got to work and do our, our individual parts to make this thing happen. Now, having said that, I hope to be with you Sunday uh, and hope I get a, an all-clear sign from our tests uh, and hope we continue to feel good. But I do feel like that I have a word from the Lord for us. And I'm going to pause our Bible studies uh, to just give you what I feel like is a very pertinent word from the Lord for his people and for us here at the POY. I can tell you personally that having such a close and powerful and dynamic call and presence in my life in the early months of this year, and I felt like we had gotten through this wave of this virus and we were moving forward, and it has been a little confusing to me uh, to see us, this thing kind of rise back up and back us back up. Uh, I've lost a few friends in ministry uh, to the COVID, and it has caused me to be a little perplexed. In other words, it has challenged me to feel like I really didn't know what to do to move forward here. And I got, I believe, a word from the Lord even today for this. And I want to share it with you. Let me begin it with this. It takes a lot of faith. And I'm going to preach this, Lord willing, this Sunday. But I want to share the beginnings of this and the makings of this now so that you maybe can get a taste of what God is speaking to us. But it takes a lot of faith to stand still. Of course, you know the scripture I'm going to take you to. But let me, uh, let me tell you a little story that I read about today. A young man, when he was young, he was, uh, he was at a circus where a circus knife thrower asked him to stand up against the wall and allow him to throw knives at him. <laughs> and like most of us would... He, did, he said, no, I, no, thank you. I don't want you throwing knives at me. But another young man who was there volunteered to stand against the wall while the man threw four knives at him and barely missed him each time. 
After throwing the fourth knife, the man looked at this other man who had refused, and he said, you know, it really takes a lot of faith to stand absolutely still when knives are being thrust at you. And of course, as it turns out in the story, we find out that the young man that was willing to stand there was the knife thrower's son who knew his father's skill and trusted him enough to stand absolutely still. In Exodus chapter 14, the Lord spoke to Moses, and many of us, we know this story of where God was delivering his people. But he led them to a place where all they could do was stand still. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihath-Hiroth, between Migdal and the sea, over against baal Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. Let me tell you what the Lord could have said. Moses, I'm walking you into what's going to look like a trap by the sea. And when you arrive there, there will be no place to go. <laughs> enjoy yourself. Enjoy the sea. Because if you're going to be my people, it's going to be necessary for sometimes for you to come to the place where there's no place to go. That's the destination. It's a spot where you got no place to go. No place to go is, it's going to feel like the end point. It's going to, it's going to feel like a place of no return. It's going to be a place where you're going to feel perplexed. Like, what do we do now? Where do we turn now? And when you arrive there, here's the word I believe that is from the Lord. We have arrived at a place where it just feels like there's not, no place to go. I'm looking for something to do here. God is saying, don't forget, I'm the one that led you here. I am still in control. I've still got this. How many times have we heard the Lord tell us that he's got this? He's got our back. He's got a hold of us. We are in his hand. And let me tell you, it's easy to feel like you're making a mistake when you get to a place where there's no place to go. Especially somebody like me. I feel like we need to be doing something. We need to be fighting. We need to be working. We need to be pushing forward. But let me, let me just show you what this story tells us. You're going to find out that Moses, a few verses later, after God tells him and gives him these instructions, Moses says unto the people in verse 13 of that chapter, Fear not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And here's the word. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. There's literally a point where we almost feel like there's nothing more to be said. There's nothing more that we can do. But we got to see what God is up to. I believe the Lord is is up to something that is probably indescribable and incomprehensible. We can't comprehend it. It's going to be beyond our dreams what God is up to right now. But he has got this. And I'm going to tell you his word is, my will is going to get done. My purpose is going to get fulfilled. I need the people of God and the people of the POY, the saints of God. I need you to understand this, that God is still on the throne, and he's got this. He's going to take care of us. We're going to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Let me tell you, God has led us here. 
If you read this passage and you read the background of this story, God reminds them of what he did in Egypt. He delivered them from Egypt. He led them with a pillar of fire to that place. What place? A place where there was no place to go. Remember that you prayed. You felt the will of God, people of God. Moses, I gave you directions, and here you are. No place to go. Let me tell you, it's a fearful place. The children of Israel got fearful. They got dismayed. They got to complaining. They got frustrated. And we got some of that going on. We're frustrated. We're, we're disappointed. We're challenged here. We've never been here before. But I am telling you, we are here on purpose. And we are here in the will and the purpose and the plan of God. And I encourage every saint of God, stay connected with the voice of the Lord. Stay connected by prayer. Keep being faithful with your Bible reading. Stay connected to the church in whatever way that you can. And lift up your voice to him and believe him. Do not give up now. I've got some of you that have gotten so disconnected and I'm so, I'm so worried about some of you. Because I haven't seen you. I haven't, haven't heard from you. You've just kind of disappeared and I'm afraid you're getting caught up in all the stuff. Getting caught up in all the world. Maybe getting caught up in your job. I, I don't know, but don't get caught up now. If there was ever a time to stay connected to what God is doing, it is right now. Because God is going to do some great things that are amazing and powerful. I want to finish preaching this message, good Lord willing, this Sunday. It's what my plans are. I pray you're here. I hope we get to see you. If you need to stay home to be safe, I understand that. But we're going to do everything we can to protect all the folks that come to the house of the Lord. And I hope to see you soon. Thank you for joining us tonight. I, I, I hope you felt what I feel. I believe the Lord is with us. And all is going to be well. I got a feeling, like the song says. Everything is going to be all right. God bless you. I love you. Appreciate you. I appreciate your faithfulness. I appreciate your concern for the kingdom of God. I love all my brothers and sisters and all this great family. Be blessed in Jesus' name.